Hello, my loves. Um, it's good to be back. It's probably a little weird because I'm back on YouTube, but I don't know if it's permanent, but I had an idea to do a video when I came home from college and I think it would be too long for reels on Instagram. So this is where it's going to be and I am super excited. Um, so this background probably looks a little bit different. My family actually moved out of our house, which is so sad but we moved to an apartment which is like not too far from our house which is really great so we are still in maryland um and then we have our house in south carolina but it's good to be home except for that it's cold um yeah so this video is going to be talking kind of about my journey over the past two years i feel like i'm gonna try to tell this story without triggering anybody um if possible but if I do please leave a comment below or just stop watching the video because I really that's the last thing I want to do me having this platform I had to it's only right for me to tell you exactly what was going on in my life um, I think that it's only fair to you because a lot of times social media glamorizes it glamorizes or you know you you didn't you only see the perfect parts of it of somebody's life and I feel like I I feel like it's only fair and right for you guys to I I pride myself on being authentic. So um this is part of that. I want to make sure that you guys know exactly who you're following. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to be perfect and nobody is perfect and I think that this video is definitely going to highlight some of the things that have been going on in the past couple of years. I think that the point is not just to tell my to tell my story of like what has been going on with me but I think also just for other people to know that you're not alone and that social media is just a snapshot of what people's lives are so without further ado um this is not going to be one of my happier videos um so I apologize for that we back to pretty much where my last YouTube video ended which was when I quit gymnastics um for many of you know, as many of you know, if you're new, um, I was a gymnast for 13 years of my life. Um, I got up to level 10, trained 25 hours a week. Um, pretty much it was like my identity. I was, I, I mean, from the time I was three years old, I ate, I worked out, I did everything um, for my sport, everything. Um, and I, I, I had a passion for uh, gymnastics that was something that most kids don't ever find or people don't ever find and it was it was it was my life and a little bit before COVID happened I started to lose my love for the sport partly because I really really wanted to do it in college and then I realized that as I was getting older it just wasn't gonna it wasn't gonna happen for me March 2020 I stopped I didn't quit gymnastics I hadn't discontinued yet but everything was shut down. So I went down to my beach house in South Carolina and was working out over Zoom. Very different, um, definitely not 25 hours a week, um, not the same intensity. That was fine. I didn't really think anything of it. I did a little bit of stuff on the side, but not really. So I made the very mature decision, hopefully it was mature, but um, to discontinue gymnastics and I announced that July 1. And then over the next couple months, I started to realize it started out as I wanted to eat healthy, whatever that was. I wanted to, um, I wanted to do whatever was healthiest for my body. I really, I wanted to just be the healthiest version of myself. What that looked like, I didn't know. So, um, I started to restrict, um, I started to cut out certain food groups, um, and then I started to overexercise. I can I convinced myself that I liked running. So I would run. And then um I also strived to have a feeling of emptiness in my stomach. Whenever I was a gymnast, I would just kind of eat on a clock. So I never kind of got that feeling of hunger. So you know, I would eat at a certain amount of time or I ate for convenience because my practice was four and a half hours and I couldn't eat during, so I would have to eat before whether I was hungry or not for energy purposes. Then I started to just stop eating, um, pretty much. I vividly remember we were going, we went to the beach um, over Thanksgiving of 2020, uh, of 2020, 
and I remember losing a lot of weight that week. Um, I was obsessed with the scale. I would get on it multiple times a day. Um, I ran a lot during that week and I would run on no fuel. Um, and I remember coming back that week and completely just like looking at the scale and feeling internally very great, um, which was terrible. But, and then I lost my period. Um, and that was kind of the, the time that I realized logically that something was wrong because as a female, if you lose that, your hormones are all off. Like something's not right. Your body is not putting energy towards that because you don't have enough. There's putting it to your vital organs. I developed an alter ego, if you will. I had me, I had Sydney, the logical bubbly happy self, but I also had Ed, which is what I'm going to call him. And I have been calling him that, um, which was my eating disorder. And that was a different brain. You know, it was a different person and it was, it took over my personality. Um, I continued out that year. I don't even, I mean, it was, I progressively just got more depressed. Um, I progressively lost my personality, which I think was the hardest part. Um, I wasn't, even, I just wasn't a human being um, at all. I wasn't myself at all. I shut people out. I slept all the time. Um, it was awful. It was, it was terrible, but Ed convinced itself that it was doing something great. Um, the more I lost and the less I ate, the more accomplished I felt, which I think is something to note is like one time when my therapist told me, um, during this process that eating disorders are so different than other mental illnesses when you have depression or you have anxiety, like no, not many parts of that are enjoyable. Um, there's no real aspect of it that is, that you want. You don't like to feel sad. You don't like to feel anxious. You don't, you know what I mean? You don't like to feel that you don't deserve to live. Like, you know, all of those things are not enjoyable. Eating disorders are different. They fit societal norms. You feel accomplished. You feel like you've, you have accomplished something. Um, and they're really hard to get rid of. Um, you feel like you're doing something. And it's terrible because you convince yourself that, but you're actually feeling like crap during the process. I mean, you have no energy. You're tired all the time. You're hungry all the time, but consider yourself, every time you're hungry, you beat yourself up because you're not supposed to be hungry. Like, that doesn't make sense. Like, that, that's, that's how you thought, and um, that's how I thought. And I think I, I think I realized through this whole, I've learned so much about myself. Um, but I learned through this process that a lot of it stemmed from gymnastics and I'm not trying to say gymnastics is something bad because it's not, it, it shaped who I, who I am, but there's a lot of aspects of it that are really hard, especially when you leave it. Um, the mantra in gymnastics was if you stop, you're gonna get fat and you can eat whatever you want because you're just gonna burn it off. And neither of those things are very helpful or healthy to think because one, it demonizes people and puts them down if they are overweight and who knows why. Um, and it also really destroys your relationship with food and exercise. So I was keeping this all to myself. Um, you all know my mom is my my rock, my best friend, and I kept all of this from her, um, which is something that was really hard. And I came to her and I was just like, I can't do this anymore. Like I'm thinking about food all the time. I'm depressed. I, I'm anxious all the time about what I'm putting in my body and what I'm putting out. And it's, it's, I can't, I can't do it anymore. I need to tell somebody, I need somebody to help me because I can't help myself. I'm just, I'm, I'm slowly killing myself is um, eventually what it came to. Um, so we went to my pediatrician. I was no longer allowed to exercise. Um, I was put on medication for the first time in my entire life. Um, went through a whole bunch of medications for that. Unfortunately, I continued to lose weight. Um, I continued to restrict. And what was so, hard about that was that 
I didn't realize at the time how sick I was. And each pound that I lost was, again, it made me feel like I was accomplishing something. Um, when I quit gymnastics, I felt like a disappointment to a lot of people, including myself. I was supposed to be, I've wasted all this time and energy and money trying to strive for college gymnastics and then I didn't even, and then I stopped before I went to college and should have pushed through and just kind of dealt with it. But uh, my last two years of high school, um, I was going through this and then, so I was, we were still like online school. So I was spending a lot of time with myself and not seeing other people. Um, so January, and then I got a therapist um, for the first time again in my entire life, which highly recommend therapy does wonders if it if it works if it doesn't work that's perfect everybody is different kind of talked to her for almost a year was still losing weight um come 2022 wasn't getting any better um my family was worried about me on levels they never have um i wanted people for some reason, I guess I was struggling when I left gymnastics and being thin and looking sick was a way, um, a physical way of showing how I was feeling. And it was terrible. So uh, college was put on the table. My parents said, if you can't, if you, if we, you can't figure this out, like you can't go to college, we can't send you away while you're sick. Like you." We, you can't do that like we can't do that um i was very close to going up to an inpatient facility um but i wanted to get through my theater production where i sang which was so fun um but again the whole time ed was there ed was louder than anything else constantly telling me all these terrible things that i will not repeat because could be triggering but I I went through all of this everything was triggering people eating and and the reason I wanted to point that out is because I don't want to be triggering because I when I was really really deep in my eating disorder I looked to other people who were going through it and while I thought that was helping it was helping Ed and not me and it just made things worse so um my recommendation is if you're going to use social media, follow people who make you happy and lift you up and not people that you compare to on any level or don't show their authentic selves. Um, because life is not like that. Life is not perfect. Um, and I think that's the hardest part to realize is you, you look at all these people that have so-called perfect bodies and perfect lives and you wonder why you can't be that way. Moving to Nat, like, college was again on the table and that is what scared me the most is I was like I I during this whole process reverted back to my childhood self um I was very dependent um on my parents I couldn't do anything on my own um it was very uncomfortable to be 18 years old an adult and not be able to eat on your own or I mean literally in a public restaurant have your parent feed you because you can't do it yourself. Um, embarrassing. So, um, so summer 2022 rolled around. I started to maybe recognize a little bit that my medication was working, which was nice. I went on all the really fun vacations and stuff and then when I went to like orientation for college, this is kind of when I think everything kind of switched. I reached out to all the athletic organizations at University of South Carolina and I heard back from baseball and I had an interview uh, for a student manager position and I got the position and that moment, I vividly remember that moment I was getting, <laughs> getting my contacts. Uh, the eye doctor. I vividly remember getting that call and hearing that I got the job. And from then on, everything was about that. Um, I was like, you know, you're working for a baseball team. All these guys are not gonna, 
Like you go out to eat with these guys and, and the coaches and the players and the people involved, they're not going to be able to like, like you don't, you don't want to have to have someone feed you while you're with, like, no, like that's not, no, that's not what you're going to do. Like you got to be an adult, especially because I'm the only female manager uh, on a boys team. So from then on, I was like, okay, well I have to get myself together. Like I have to get myself together. And that pushed me a lot. Um, not enough, <laughs> but as we can see, I did go to college. Um, I was eating more. Um, through this whole process, my mom was amazing. Um, she is a huge reason of why I am on my road to recovery. I don't use the word better because with mental illness, it's so easy to say, oh, well, you know, she's eating now, she's better. I am not better. And better is so, like, what is better, you know? So I am getting there. I am improving. I am fueling my body. I am recognizing what my body does for me. I'm now starting to work out and lift weights, which I never thought that I would ever do. Um, I remember being triggered by that. I remember literally doing one squat with a bar on my back and going home and crying, like sobbing. So, so I got to school and then I got the job. And from the moment that I stepped into that baseball facility, I was done. Like that moment I stepped in there, I recognized that I had, I had an identity crisis when I left gymnastics and I was like, oh my gosh, who am I? Every time someone asked me who I was, I was like, I'm a gymnast. <laughs> like, duh, like what else am I supposed to say? And I struggled with the last two years of high school trying to figure out who I was. I tried theater, which I absolutely love. Um, but I was like, I, I had a passion from such a young age and then I lost that passion. And I was like, what am I supposed to do now? I stepped in that baseball facility and recognized that my passion is baseball. I don't play it. I'm not, not good at it. Any player, if they're watching this video, can tell you that catching pop flies is just not my specialty. <laughs> so, um, but I'm getting there. But b that field is my happy place. There could be people in there. And that's when my favorite part is when I see all the players. But being in that facility is my happy place. I do homework there. I study there. I just sit in there sometimes. Like I'm always there. And that's because it makes me feel good. It reminds me of why I'm recovering. I'm recovering for a lot of reasons, but that's my biggest thing. Um, my future is really important to me and my future is baseball. And I wanna make sure that I'm healthy enough to remember it and experience it and do it for a long time. Um, I've developed so many friendships from um, the players and the people that I work with. Um, they truly make going into my job every day like so much better. It has truly made me a happier person. I feel like I'm thriving there. Um, also something that helped me start to recover. One, I had to be forced to be away from my parents. Um, that was really hard, but um, I had to. And then also having dining halls where um, there's an unlimited amount of food. Really difficult, let me tell you, the amount of times that I've cried. Just like, it's overwhelming. It was very overwhelming at first. Um, trying to fit and navigate it on my own. I was like, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how much I'm supposed to eat. I was always worried about too much. Um, when I was really deep in my eating disorder, I was scared of everything. And living in fear in a body that was craving something to give it life and um, is hard. So, um, but when I got to campus, I also struggled with nutrition labels and calories all the time. So when I got to campus, there's no cat, like not really calories in dining halls. So that kind of forced me to eat when I was hungry. Um, eat, yeah, like eat when I was hungry, eat as much as, or as little as you wanted, like really start to tune in with hunger and fullness, which was really, really a challenge for me, but I think I'm getting there. Um, and then I started going to group therapy, which is the first time I've ever done that. And it was, I thought it was gonna be triggering and it probably would have back a year or two ago. I felt heard. I felt that other people were going through what I was going through. So that was nice. So that on top of everything at school, 
I've started to recover. So that's positive. Um, I truly feel like I'm, I think the, the best part about this all is like, I'm starting to be my own self again. Um, I'm happier. I'm bubbly. I smile more. Like I have more energy and I get to be in the baseball field every day. Like what else could I want? So, um, again, every day I go in there and I'm like, Oh, you know, I haven't, I haven't eaten lunch yet. I'm like, you know what? Like I need to eat lunch today because one, your body needs it. And two, you want to work here tomorrow, you know, like, so I think being in that environment really pushed me. Um, it also helped to be around so many, like my school is so big. I'm around all types of people that are different shapes and sizes and they're happy. So I think that is pretty much where I'm at right now. I am so much happier, um, which is great, but that's not to say I don't have my rough days. So appearance aside, you're beautiful. Like there are parts, your personality is what people love. Um, I think I'm starting to recognize that, that honestly, the right people in your life will not care how you look. Um, they care about who you are and how you make them feel. And that is truly the most important part. Um, that's what I've recognized at least, at least I'm trying to recognize that, that you're important and you belong on this earth and you deserve a happy, beautiful life. And to do what makes you happy, um, I think it's really hard to recognize. I do appreciate you listening. Um, if you are going through any sort of eating issue, highly recommend reaching out to help, um, for help. It is, it was instrumental in my, um, recovery process. I kind of like being on YouTube again. This is fun. <laughs> um, but I can't wait to show you guys. I, uh, I really like that you enjoy seeing my college life because it's great. Like I'm just meeting so many people and I'm having the best time. Comment down below another video that you'd like to hear. Maybe I'll start, maybe. I can't promise anything, um, but comment that, and yeah, I love you all. Have a fantastic day.